FIFO inventory valuation, which stands for first in, first out, results in the oldest purchases being recorded as costs of goods sold. Let's look at an example. Let's assume the following inventory data. March 1, beginning inventory is 200 units at $10 each. March 4th, we purchased an additional 300 units at $20 each. March 10th, we sold 400 units at $50 each. Now, the $50 is the retail price, not the cost. We will need to figure out the cost of goods sold by applying FIFO valuation to our data. March 20th, we purchased an additional 500 units at $30 each. March 25th, sold 300 units at $50, the price of $50. Again, we'll figure out the cost in a minute. Finally, March 30th, we purchased 100 units at $40 each. If you want to pause the video at this point and write down those numbers, uh, I would encourage you to do that and then just start it right up. So with this data and using FIFO, let's record the March 10th and 25th sales as well as determine the value of ending inventory, assuming this is a perpetual inventory tracker. Since this company uses perpe the perpetual method of tracking inventory, the dates of the transactions matter. So we need to list them in chronological order. Additionally, the purchases and sales are recorded when they happen. So I like to present the same data in a big inventory T account. In fact, everything that I have listed here isn't dependent on the valuation method. The items, uh, are, uh, the items that are dependent are the ones highlighted on the credit side of the account. Let's figure out what those are. So we know on March 10th we sold 400 units at $50 each, which gives a sales revenue of $20,000. But how much is cost of goods sold? Well, let's apply FIFO to figure that out. We sold 400 units. FIFO means first in, first out. So the first units in are the 200 of beginning inventory. So we sold all 200 units of beginning inventory, leaving zero. However, that doesn't account for all 400 units. The next oldest items are March 4th. We sold 200 units from here, leaving 100 in inventory. So we assume that the 400 units sold on March 10th uh, came from 200 units of beginning inventory and 200 units from the March 4th purchase. We total those and the cost of goods sold is $6,000. The next decision we need to make happens with the sale on March 25th. We sold 300 units. So which 300 units did we sell using FIFO? The oldest purchases remaining are from March 4th. We sold all 100 units, leaving zero. The next oldest purchases came from March 20th. We sold 200 of these, leaving 300 in inventory. So we assume that 300 units sold on March 25th came from 100 units from March 4th and 200 units from the March 20th purchase. We total those and costs of goods sold is $8,000. Of course, the revenue comes from the fact that we sold 300 units at $50 each. So what's the total amount of costs of goods sold and what's the value of the ending inventory? Costs of goods sold is the total of the credit side of the inventory account, which in this case is $14,000. Ending inventory is the remaining amount on the debit side of the inventory account. There are 300 units from the March 20th purchase with a cost, a total cost of $9,000 and 100 units from the March 30th purchase with a total cost of $4,000. This totals 400 units and a value of $13,000. Finally, if we were completing a perpetual inventory record, you can see the purchases were entered in the purchase columns. The units sold are recorded and notice that they total the costs of goods sold already computed. March 10th, $6,000 and March 25th, $8,000. Finally, ending inventory is a running total that results in 400 units of inventory with a cost of $13,000.